Hey friends, hey. welcome back to After the Sermon. My name's Justin. And I'm Daniel. Hey, you're, Special guest. You're not Carrie. I should be like, the <laughs> long hero. <laughs> Man, hey, uh, so this is the week of Thanksgiving, <clears throat> and we hope and pray that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, I, I'm going to ask you, do you like white meat or dark meat off that turkey? Ooh, Dark. Dark meat? Yeah. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. The There's white more meat. flavor. There is. And the white meat's always a little disappointing. You're like, I want the white meat, but <laughs> so dry. So dry. <laughs> <I know. Yeah. laughs> All right. Hey, so over these few months, we're studying the gospel according to John during a series called Know the King. And this week, I covered John chapter 7. And then we're going to take a break for a few weeks yep. for Advent. So we won't be doing after the sermon. But come January, we'll be back. And we'll start these conversations cool. each and every Monday. So, so let's taught, dive in. You taught yesterday. Yep. And you taught, you were supposed to cover the entire chapter of John 7. Yes. Is that true? That is true. And okay. it's a lot of verses. And I feel like you didn't, you may not have gotten to everything. Sometimes yeah. you have to cut a few things yeah. to help us process some things. So is what's something that... You didn't get to cover, and you would have loved if you had 15 more minutes to finish. Yeah, that's that's a great question. So there's actually a little word in verse 8, and I, I covered this verse, but I didn't cover this detail, and I just I found it to be so interesting. Mm. So in verse 8, Jesus is speaking to his disciples, and they're talking about time. He says, now is not the right time for me to go to the festival, but you can go anytime. Then he says, you go on, and then he says, I'm not going up to this festival. Now the NLT version doesn't have the word up, but the NIV and the NET, the NRSV have that little word up and it says, I'm not going up to this festival. Now here's the interesting detail. Well, they asked him to go. The festival was not, and they specifically said, let's go to the festival in Judea. Yes. Right. And Judea is south of Galilee. And they're in the Galilee, they're, which around the Sea of Galilee That's area. right. Up here. And Judea is down here. Is this way. That's right. That is not up. Now, Sometimes in our English, we'll be like, hey, we're going to go up to South Carolina. We're going to go, you know, I don't, I don't, maybe that's the way you talk. No, I don't want to offend you. But, but there's a couple ways to look at this. One is in the NET uh, Bible, in the commentary, it talks about that in Jerusalem, there is a mountain. And a lot of times it was identified by that mountain. And so it's possible that what Jesus is saying is we're going to go up to Jerusalem, meaning mm. we're going to go up to the mountain. That's one way of looking at it. Well, then can, I, can I go for it? Because I lived in the Galilee okay. and I lived for a year in Jerusalem. Well, then you have better experience than me. Go for and it. And I don't know the, the actual like geography of like what the difference is, but I can tell you that there's not a lot of mountains in Israel. Okay. We would think of them as hills. Ah. So what we have going to a ski mountain, they don't have that. Okay. It's more like the foothills where my parents live in. Like the Hickory area. Yeah, so That's, it's more like a plateau. And so Rolling I'm thinking, hills. and when I lived in both areas, I couldn't tell you, oh, Jerusalem was a ton higher. And he's from Nazareth, and I lived in Nazareth, right? Okay. Nazareth and Jerusalem felt the same elevation to me. Interesting. Okay, so there's a second Okay, idea. <laughs> yeah. And I think I like this idea because the second idea, and commentators write about this, is that John is writing this into the narrative and Jesus, having Jesus say in such a way, it's not time for me to be raised up, meaning Ooh. to be raised up on the cross. Ooh. And so when it says that Jesus will be lifted up and all people will be drawn to him, it is referring to the cross when he is lifted up on the cross, that we see him elevated on the cross. And so what Jesus is saying, according to some commentators, is it's not time for me to go to the cross. It's not time for me to go up in Jerusalem on the cross. And so, um, yeah, so just a, a small wow. little detail, a word that you could kind of go around and have conversations about. But we do know this, is that that this was happening in the fall, so probably around October time. And then in that spring, that following spring will be when Jesus is crucified. Mm -hmm. And this is the last time that Jesus will be in Judea, will be in Jerusalem until the spring when he is crucified. Okay. And so he's saying, this is not the time for me to be raised up, but the time is coming. Man. The time is coming. That's so, amazing. Yeah, that's little amazing. detail. Well, we got one question. Okay. And I'd like to read the question. Yeah. And then just 
see what you think. And yeah. you know, this whole series, we've been getting questions from people. They're yes. texting into the number. Yes. 980-999-1330. Man, that was good. That you text into. All right. Um, and you can save that for January because we'll be texting questions in. Yeah. So the question is this, what does it say about the nature of Jesus that he could fulfill prophecies and the crowd didn't think he did? Mm. And he could perform miracles and his own brothers didn't believe? Yeah, yeah, man, that is a that is a fantastic question. And and I think it does speak to who Jesus is in that he remained he remained grounded in his father. And so he would do something, even in John six, whenever he says something really difficult like eat my body and drink my <laughs> yeah. blood, which the is disciples are like, what is that? Yeah, yeah, and the crowds <laughs> are like deuces. Um and he says that and he's not he's not shook. He, he, he just remains really, really grounded. And, and mm. so what's happening here to me is interesting is that, that the disciples seem to want Jesus to be defined by what other people say about him and what other people want him to do. So they say, leave here and go to Judea where your followers, where your followers can see your miracles and you can be famous. Yeah. You can be famous. If That's you'll do crazy. these wonderful things and the world will know who you are. So they're saying, aren't you concerned about the applause mm -hmm. and the approval of the world around you? And Jesus says, no, I'm not. I, I'm not defined by what other people say about me, what other people expect from me, what other people want me to do. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm and not. And there would have been huge expectations on the Messiah. On the Messiah. Well, so there are so the, many. The Jewish people would have had all kinds of crazy ideas of what the Messiah was going to deliver them from and what it required, what that leader would have to be to deliver them from these evils. Yeah. And depending on which group you were part of, I mean, just the Pharisees, the Sadducees, just to name a couple, there's all these groups that have different expectations of what the Messiah is going to be. Yep. And then the crowds, the poor would have all had different, they would have read and heard the Hebrew text and they would have had certain expectations of what the Messiah, the savior is going to be. And what I think the disciples are saying is, aren't you concerned because you could be famous. This is your moment. Aren't you, aren't you concerned with if you did these prophecies, if you did these, if you fulfilled these prophecies and you, you perform these miracles that people would look to you, mm. they'll follow you, you can build a platform and Jesus just shakes it off like, nah. Yeah. And that is, holy smokes. I mean, that is something I so badly want to emulate. I don't know if that's true for you. Like, oh, yeah, I get caught up in wanting the approval and the applause of the world around me. Mm -hmm. Does that does that resonate with you? Yeah, because it because I get some I get a validation of it. Like I get this I for some odd reason the way I grew up and the depravity that is, exists in my life I feel the need for you to 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 name me as like okay. Yeah. Yeah. And to approve of to, you to Yeah, to like affirm say you. you've met a standard. Yeah. Yeah. And and so that's what is, without Jesus, if you remove Jesus and him giving me identity, yeah. then that's always what I'm going to chase. You know, a story that came to mind is Luke 15 and the um, prodigal sons. Prodigal sons. Notice how I did that there. <laughs> because we know the younger son is lost. He yeah. goes off and spends all his money, parties, blah, 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 blah. But it's the older son that is also lost because mm -hmm. he's in the fields. He's working his fingers to the bone. He is doing everything that he thinks his father expects of him. And then the father comes out celebrating that the younger son is back. And all the older son wants is to be approved of, to be affirmed, to, mm -hmm. to receive the father's. Like, what if, <laughs> I think the older son wants, and I can resonate with this, the older son wanted the dad to come out and say, man, my busted son is back. My Nimrod son is back. <laughs> but dude, you have been amazing. Yeah. And we're going to throw a party for how amazing you are. Yeah. You know? And that's all he desired was this approval. And Jesus <laughs> shows us a different way that we don't have to be performing and producing for other people's approval. Mm -hmm. That we're not guided by what they say about us or what they expect of us. But what Jesus does all throughout John 
is that he is grounded in what his father says of him and where his father is calling him. Mm. His affirmation comes from his Abba father, who is perfect. Not, not depraved like us, not depraved like our fathers, and not depraved like <laughs> right. the other people in our lives. Yeah. But the Father, the Abba Father, is perfect. And so that's where we receive affirmation. That's where we receive mm. approval. That's where we receive applause. Mm. You know. Um, so I think of a couple places. Like when Jesus is baptized, he comes up out of the water, and the heavens split open. And the Father says, that's my boy. I love him, and I'm pleased with him. He approves of him. Yes. Or... I mean, before what? he'd even done any ministry, he hadn't done anything. Had nothing. He didn't have any followers. <laughs> he didn't. He hadn't taught anything. He was from the wrong side of the tracks. Yeah. You know, like man, what an incredible thing! Like, so that's where he's grounded. And for the disciples and the crowds and the Pharisees, they wanted him to bow to other people's approval and other people's applause and how they wanted him to act. And he's like, no, I'm following the Father. Mm. Following the Father. So That's good. That's a yeah. good conversation. I'd love to know any thoughts that you have, if, you're re- if you've read John Simmon or if, they were at this, if they've heard the sermon, yeah. what questions do you have that we didn't get to? Maybe we can answer some in yeah. the comments. And um, I, I really enjoy this. Hopefully we'll keep it going. This after yeah. sermon thing is pretty sweet. It is. It's great. <laughs> Man, thank you so much for hanging out with us. And uh, we'll see you for these after the sermons after Christmas. All right. See you. Bye.